It's Friday night, everybody. You know what that means. It's Friday night. Let's have some fun. Let's get together and play a ton. Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm John. And we... Friday Night Games. We want to immerse you to our love of the hobby by educating and entertaining you through our board gaming adventures. Our podcast lands every Friday, and we create content for Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. This episode is sponsored by TabletopRenaissance.ca, located in our hometown of Windsor, Ontario, Canada. They have a web store, so go out and check TabletopRenaissance.ca for your board gaming and tabletop miniature needs. And if you don't, check out the other board games in our city, which are Brimstone Games, The CG Realm, and Area 51 Outpost. Awesome. So just as a recap for everyone, we're on episode two of Friday Night Games, last game space game standing of all time. And starting with five games chosen by five amazing content creators, a game will be voted off each week until there's only one game left standing. On the last show, there was no game voted off because it was the first episode where we introduced all the content creators and all the games. So we are left with Eclipse which is being wrapped by the Meeple Dungeon, Twilight Imperium, which is being wrapped by definitely a board game podcast, Nemesis, which is being wrapped by Meeple Mentor, Battlestar Galactica, which is being wrapped by Of Dice and Men, and with us wrapping Space, Space Team. Team. And joining us on today's show, we are joined by Jared and Jay of Meeple Mentor. Hey, welcome. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having us yeah. on your podcast. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, yeah, this has been we're great. Super excited to have you on. So today you're going to help us vote off one of those games we just mentioned. Are you excited? I am very excited. Yeah. I think this is awesome. And just kind of being able to participate in this kind of battle death match. Yeah, I like to have the power <laughs> of their fate in my hands. So that's pretty awesome. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a truly epic space battle when you think about it. Pew, pew. Yeah, we're getting all Star Warsy in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jared and Jay, can you tell everyone where they can find you? Yeah, so primarily we're a YouTube channel. We also have a podcast that has the video version on that channel, and then we just kind of put that out to wherever you stream. You know, you can find it on YouTube, essentially, at Meeple Mentor, if you want to find tutorial videos that we make and news and... Unboxings. Uh, and other stuff. Top 10 lists, all that good stuff. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. So... I don't, obviously, we're we're not video, <laughs> so people can't yeah. see. But Jared, you have a pretty sweet uh, mohawk going on there. Is that like colored differently every time I I see like your Instagram pics? Yeah. So basically, I like keeping it like different every time, and uh, I usually ask my my kids, two girls, five and eight, and uh, anytime it's time to like re dye it, I say, "What color should I do?" And it's like blue green pink purple sometimes just bleach it you know oh they must um, love that eh you're like you're like a dad barbie doll for them basically yeah <laughs> yeah yeah when we when we record at my house i've got these uh led lights on the back of my game shelf so i always match them with his hair color <laughs> <laughs> do you nice. do that on game nights too just to like troll jared a bit you're like... <laughs> you should, totally should do. just get into my head there <laughs> Psych me out. And sometimes he'll come green and I'll put it in yellow and he'll think he's like getting colorblind. It's it's really sad. Yeah. But we do what we can. Yeah. That's great. Uh, it's it's fun. It's yeah. all psychological yeah. warfare. I like it. Yeah, that's pretty much. I'm trying to wear him down slowly over time. You know, is take it working? It over for myself. Is it working? Kind of is it working? It's not working at all. Okay. <laughs> I will say that out of the people we play games with, like regularly, Jay loses the most often. That's true. That's absolutely true. <laughs> that's why he's I'm, playing I'm trying this. to lull them into a false sense of you know security. So that one day I'll actually win something. Well, if it were party games and like family games, then you'd yep. probably win. I mean, I'd kill it, Uno. But we, we keep throwing <laughs> heavy stuff at him and he's just not ready yet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then they never want to play Llama with me. So, I mean, what are you going to do? Oh, man, Llama's such a good game, too. That's sad. It is. I, I like that game. I yeah, like it a lot, actually. I do. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's what I'm saying. It's sad that no one wants to play with you. I know. I, know. <laughs> I haven't played that one yet. And it's the, it, You'd have the advantage. Well, you know, me and Reiner Knizia, it's a Reiner Knizia game. So. Yeah, that's his you favorite know, designer. My, it pro probably is my favorite designer. Awesome. So, nice. Yeah. So what got you both into board game content creation? Uh, I guess I'll go first. I 
a couple of years ago, uh, I guess it's three years now, I had the idea that, you know, if, if I were able to make a video that had the tutorial for an, a long game that I wanted to play with my friends, then they could just watch it. And then before we get there, like everyone will already know how to play and we get more game time in for these long games. It, so not doing a whole lot of research, I just went ahead and made a video. I used my wife's camera on her little tripod did not do any lighting whatsoever. I didn't even like put the video so that it showed my face. Like it cut <laughs> off my neck. <laughs> I'm like, this is not for anybody to necessarily see. It's just for my friends. So I put that on my public channel just to like hand that out and say, hey guys, what do you think? You know, can we play this now? So for reference, that was for Archipelago, just because I didn't want to have to teach it like in person. Just it's a long teach. Mm. So that was what initially made you know, me decide to do content. And then a year after that, so I had basically put on my public channel and then a year later, I kind of see all the stats of this thing. And I'm like, there's a lot of views on this. And I, I didn't even try, you know, <laughs> I'm like, maybe there's something to just like trying and making an effort to like improve on that. Cause I feel like personally, like I'm a good uh, rules ex explainer and I usually am the one teaching games mm -hmm. and so I was like if I can just make it one time video I don't have to keep you know <laughs> wasting my breath but I took that into a, a, the concept of just you know why don't I just make it a YouTube channel so I started that channel and you know from there just prepped and decided which games I felt like would need videos mm. you know yeah Awesome. Yeah. And, and so for me, so both of us live in North Carolina, but I only moved here about a year ago. And so Jared and I connected through BGG and just kind of hit it off. Then I found out he was doing content creation. I think just on kind of a whim, I mentioned, you know, it, I thought about doing a podcast that'd be kind of cool to do or something. Yeah. So, just an email through BGG. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was really, you know, just nothing. And then uh, Jared's like, well, why don't we do that? Yeah. And so we started doing a series called uh, Mentor Minutes. That was primarily a video YouTube series, but was also aimed at a podcast audience. And so the audio goes on to, um, you know, all the podcasts, the applications. Right. And uh, it's just a spinoff where we do top 10 lists and things like that. So outside of that, I've, I've not done any other content creation. So it's all, all Jared's show here. So it's important to note that that when he came to me with the podcast idea, I was like, that's a lot of work if I'm going to also add that to the stuff I already do series wise, mm -hmm. because I do a lot of video series now and not when I started, but I keep adding things yeah. onto myself yeah. for some reason. <laughs> yeah. So I said, I'm willing to do it if you take on the responsibility of being like the head of it, you know, like coming up with topics, organizing interviews if we have it or whatever, any prep work that needs to be done, and then I'll show up and we'll record, because that would take a lot of the pressure and, yeah. and time that I don't have off of creating the podcast. So it's really more his brainchild as far as the podcast. Yeah. But do you do like 90% of the work? So <laughs> it's still, he does all the editing and he's like a one man show when it comes to all that stuff. But yeah, that's true. so I get to participate and it's, it's fun. And it's been, uh, we've been doing it for a year now, Yeah, wow. which is crazy to think it's been that long, but we're on episode 28. Yeah. So it's been, it's been fun. We do it every other week. So, you yeah, know, there you go. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, I guess we're, we're, we were going to ask you how you got into teaching the medium heavyweight games, but you answered that, so I did. There we go. <laughs> um, so that's awesome. Yeah, I basically was figuring, you know, if I'm going to start teaching games, it's got to be ones that, you know, people need to learn how to play from someone, like, who has to teach it. Because I know, like, there's a lot of people and friends of mine, too, who won't read the rule book. Or if they do, they just do terribly <laughs> at explaining it or understanding it. Because even if you understand the rules, teaching it is another skill. Mm -hmm. And so you might be wanting to play a heavy game because you saw how cool it was, you recommended it. Right. But if you don't have the skill set to either learn it to your, you know, teach it to yourself, read the rules, or teach it to someone else, it's never getting played. Like you have to find someone to do that. And I thought, well, I can be that guy because I feel like the way that I present things is pretty like cohesive. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I focused on those heavier games, because, you know, just as a, a way to introduce new games to either, you know, hobbyists that aren't, you know, skill set wise or new gamers who are like, hey, that was that's an interesting idea or topic. And now I can watch this video and actually learn to play without 
you know, finding someone local to teach it to me. Yeah. So that's the goal. That's why my videos are as comprehensive as, as can be, mm -hmm. so that they don't have to look in the rule book to learn the game. And there's a lot of uh, people who do tutorials, but they're not doing a lot of the heavy games. So like you did one for Mage Knight, for example. Yeah. Plus, a lot of times those tutorials don't include like solo modes or variants. And so Jared does all that in his videos. So, you know, with the timestamps and everything else. So definitely if you're looking for how to learn a heavy game, there's a pretty good chance Jared's got it on his channel. Well, I mean, I, I do two a month. Popular so. heavy game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not something obscure, but yeah. Pretty, pretty popular that, stuff. That, that's know? a very good point. I feel like, you know, there, there are a lot of, I mean, the most popular is watch it played and they, they do kind of shy away a lot of times from like the very, very mm -hmm. heavy stuff, mm -hmm. which right. yeah. makes sense because, you know, they probably only have so much time and it's probably easier. Oh, to they focus out. on the new hotness and yeah. I'm not really that channel. I'm like, mm. these are some mainstays that are great games that you should play and you probably haven't because they're too heavy or complicated. Right. I don't have anyone to teach to you. Mm. So I comprehensively teach everything that I can in one single video for it, which is why Mage Knight is an hour and 15 minute video. Yeah. yeah. Which makes sense. The gate behind you. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> right behind me on the shelf. I got through it, but man, it is a large game and yeah. it takes a lot yeah. to learn. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, exactly. I, I actually won't even teach it to our, our group. <laughs> it's so complicated. I'm like, I don't think anyone is going to get through it. <laughs> the first time someone taught it to me, it was like three and a half, four hours each. Yeah, no. well, you kind of have to play it, right, to kind of understand right. it. Mm. And the more you play it, the more you understand it. I played it solo maybe like five times, but I played it all in a row. You tell me it teaches someone right now, I couldn't. I'd actually have to read the rule book all over again. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, we would watch yeah, right, Jared's right. video. We would watch Jared's video. Yeah, there exactly. Go. There you go. On yeah. uh, <laughs> the Meeple Mentor channel on YouTube. That's there what you should do. That's, That's what I'm going to do. do. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> We, Our, we didn't lead the witness at all in that. <laughs> Thanks for the free shout out. I'll pay you later. Uh, yes. <laughs> by voting, by not voting our game off. That's all. No, I'm just kidding. That's right. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's, that would be fair. You know. I'm just kidding. You that can vote, our, you can vote <laughs> us <laughs> off. <laughs> all right. But Let's thanks keep... for having us on. Uh, this has been fun. I like this. Yeah, it's hey. neat. It's neat to get involved with other creators in uh, this kind of way, especially when it's a showdown like a survivor style. Yeah, game showdown, which and I guess you know, cool so we, we got in touch through the Gateway Network, which is a really cool yes. like concept of you know just getting mm -hmm. smaller content creators or growing content creators in the board game industry, um, you know, connected, networked, and you know, shouting each other out, having them on podcasts. So it's really cool to be a part of that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And if you're a listener, definitely check out the Gateway Network. There, it's an awesome community of board game content creators. And we're very excited to be a part of that. Yeah. So. All right. So on that note, we're going to go back to last game standing and we're going to be able to try and vote off one of these games. So we are left with Eclipse by uh, rep by Meeple Dungeon, Twilight Imperium rep by Definitely a Board Game Podcast, Nemesis, which is being rep by you guys. Battlestar Galactica being rep by Of Dice and Men. And of course, Space Team being rep by Friday Night Games, which is us. So today's question is all about theme. Why is this game the best of all the space theme games ever made? Why did you choose this game? Sell it to the listeners. All right, let's give that a listen. So why did we choose this game, Matt? Have you ever watched a space movie in your life, John? Not a single one. How often does a space movie start off like the most perfect everything? Yeah, every time, Spaceship is always in chaos. Someone's dying. Everyone's under high stress, probably, to repair the ship. They're all yelling at each other, you mm -hmm. know? Hint, mm -hmm. hint. You're going to mm -hmm. yell at each other in this game. Yeah. You could play the other games over the span of uh, a bajillion <laughs> hours per session. <laughs> and we know we've played maybe like a half an hour of all of them, so... And I, John even fell asleep. Yeah, I have a, I have a problem with falling asleep I think playing you're... games, apparently. <laughs> I think you might be uh, have a sleeping disorder, buddy. What do you think? I'm just tired. I mean, I, I counted. You fell asleep during Nemesis. You fell asleep <laughs> during Battlestar Galactica. You couldn't even get through the two other playthroughs of the other two games. Listen, don't at me, okay? <laughs> you get up early. I, I get it. I get it. That's that's your crutch, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not because those games are terrible. It's because you, you got up early. I, I do long days, short sleeps. But here's the here's the here's the kicker though. You, did you fall asleep at all during this game? No, I was 100% attentive the attentive the entire time. 
all 148 plays of it. Yes. Yes. A- and the 149th play we're going to do tonight, you know. Cuz they're all like 2 minutes. Yeah. You know, and and, and why are you going to go play the other games, you know, like a 24-hour game? You could play this game 240 times. It only takes 5 minutes, so that's like <laughs> 10 an hour. Okay? You're going to get that much replay value out of the others? No. <laughs> that's why you need to vote for Space Team. You can always play it all the time. Not on Mars. Not on Mars. Don't vote for on Mars. You can't. Space team. Space team. Space team. Why is Nemesis the best space theme game ever? Yeah, so for me personally, and you certainly played this more than I have, but one thing is that the theme just really comes through so well in everything you do. So all the mechanics, all the actions you take, the, the events that get revealed. I mean, it, it feels like you're playing a cinematic experience just like, you know, you're in one of the Aliens movies. Right. This definitely feels a lot more Aliens than Alien, mm-hmm. if you know the difference, because it's a lot more action-packed. You can, mm-hmm. you know, get weapons and fight the Aliens and, th- and things but like that. But don't expect to be killing them left and right. I mean, they're right. very difficult to kill, <clears throat> yes. and your ammunition is extremely limited. It is, and, and, and a lot of times your best bet is just to try to escape, you know, yeah. as well. And and the cool thing is you can... You can uh, I mean, th- there's just so many ways that the game can turn out i don't know how much we want to talk about our specific game but i think every play is unique but you have it it just it's kind of a sandbox for allowing you to experience these highly thematic moments like when our last game yeah. when we when we airlocked uh, the, the queen the queen oh that was exciting. so you know we had we had the, we had the queen show up really really early in the game it's so there's different life cycles of the aliens and sometimes you know you're you're pulling these tokens out of the bag whenever you have to draw one yes. and it could be a larva which is just a small little thing mm-hmm. or the adult Adults. or the breeders or creepers yeah or the queen yes well in our game we had drawn like four or five larva mm-hmm. like we're like oh, yeah, this is are, easy these are babies they're like easy. all we're dealing with so far are these little baby creatures right mm-hmm. no the very next thing <laughs> after just larva the yeah, queen pulled the queen out of the bag right and he was like oh, no. really this can happen <laughs> yeah early yes. early on and and the queen you never and and one of the other really neat things about the game too is Unlike a lot of other sort of combat style games, you kind of go into it knowing how much damage you have to do against the creatures to take them out. Whereas this is one of the most unique systems in the game. And I think we'll probably talk about some of this a a little later in some of the segments too. But you don't know until you've done an attack how much strength that alien has. And even then, there's a chance that thematically they could recover. So the next time you try to shoot them, they could actually have more strength Mm. or less. So, you know, you're always taking a risk attacking because you never really know if you're going to deal enough damage. Deal, deal enough damage and then there's going to be repercussions because they're going to come after you as right. well. So, but, but as we were talking about the queen, you know, we, we were in this situation where we sort of lured the queen into this specific type of area in the spaceship. And that set us up to use a computer system in another room to actually the seal, airlock. yeah, seal the airlocks. And then as long as the queen had like destroyed the doors, to try to get through by the time the round ended, mm-hmm. then you know she got evacuated out into space. So, or if another player didn't another open the player. door, yeah, and that's in, in one of your games you were describing you yeah, had, sabotage <laughs> things. Yeah, so if you have a player whose whose goal is to play like, kill everybody against you, you know, or something, yeah, they they may end up trying to like knock an alien into your space or something like that. So, super thematic. Most space games are about like ships and exploring planets and things like that. This one's set in space, but just gives a really like I said that sort of survival horror with a little bit of dread and adventure kind of mixed in. Uh, so for me, that's why I really liked it. Best space theme game because you feel the theme constantly. You feel like you're on board this ship. Uh, all you need is the background music, essentially, because yeah. like you, you, you're you always about thinking about survival and there's the horror element of you never know when an alien's going to pop out or chase you or what kind of damage it's going to do. Sometimes they might just kill you. Or you'll get a mm-hmm. chest burster, and then a card comes out and says, anyone who's got one of those things in their chest, they just die. Right. And that's the kind of stuff that I think makes up a great sci-fi space game. And Alien, the movie, is, of course, one of my favorites. And this game very much imitates a lot of that experience. Yeah. And it's sort of the quintessential, for me, experience of what you want from a space game. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you know, comparing it to other games like On Mars, Eclipse, Twilight Imperium, uh, or Battle Scar- Star uh, Battle Star Galactia. This definitely has way better table presence. I mean, right. 
The miniatures that come with this, the alien miniatures are amazing uh, look in fantastic. the detail. Very um, detailed. You have awesome, really highly detailed player miniatures. The artwork on the cards is just top notch. I mean, it's it's just uh, high production values like the whole whole way through. So it's it's also that's also something that kind of kind of pulls you into the game as well because you're actually seeing these huge aliens, you know, on the board chasing you around, and uh, and it's not just like cardboard pieces. Hello, everybody. This is Rob. And Anna Marie. And we are the Meeple Dungeon. You can find us on Twitter and YouTube and our own podcast on all the major podcasting sites. And we're here to tell you why Eclipse is the best space themed game ever. 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 And we're going to tell you why. For many reasons. There's, there's so many that we couldn't write them all down. We have a sheet of paper in front of us. And we ran out of room. So you're just going to get the best ones up front here. <laughs> First off, it's a 4X game, right? It's a lot of Xs. It's a lot, four Xs. It's four Xs. Other games don't even have three or two Xs. That's right. We've got Some, four. This one's got four. And I'm telling you, that's a lot of Xs. And those Xs are talking about exploring, exploiting, exterminating, expanding. That's right. What games can do all those things? Not, not many. No. Not good like this, especially not TI. It doesn't do half as good with its X's as Eclipse does. No. So, when you're exploring in Eclipse, you are soaring into the galaxy and you're and you're you're finding new relics and you're finding new planets to 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 exploit for their resources. So you get to do two of them all in in one go. (laughs) All in one go. It's that it's that easy. So you're exploring, and you're 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 finding things, finding planets, finding resources. Using it to your advantage, that's just one thing. Well, it's two. It's two. But they're they're kind of combined together. They work together. Yeah. Then, I mean, exterminating. Who doesn't love exterminating your opponent? That's a harsh word. It like, is a I'm harsh word. Like, I'm not just going to beat you. I'm going to exterminate you. Yeah. It's right? a purpose. <laughs> yes. That is, that is final. Like, that's very <laughs> final. I've been ex- exterminated. Yeah. Right? It's not a good feeling. You don't feeling. want to be that guy. No. Or girl. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> Expanding. You're building your fleet. You're building a star fleet. You can build dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts. I don't think TI has that. If they do, they're not nearly as cool as these ones. No. TI just doesn't even know what they're what they're doing with dreadnoughts. Eclipse knows what they're doing with dreadnoughts. Yeah, you're expanding that fleet and you're 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 sending that fleet out to all of your conquered planets and you're you're expanding your star fleet and and, and nation and it's incredible. <laughs> And it plays up to six players. Six players. And not just, What other oh, games can do that? I know TI can, but they don't do it like this. A lot of games, you know, they, they can play up to six players. But they can, but they it's don't usually do a it well. detriment. That's the thing. It's usually like, yeah. oh, okay, we can just add on two more players. And it's like, oh, okay, this yeah. one, you have six players, and it enhances the, ga- the experience. And yeah. it's awesome. What games get better with six players? Not many. Eclipse does. Eclipse I'll tell does. you that. It's fantastic. Yes. And it doesn't take away from the game. It makes it better. And it still finishes in like three hours. Yeah. And what game can say that? Not TI, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> prove me wrong. That's never happened before. The six, <laughs> six player game of TI? I don't think so. Eclipse gets that done. TI, yeah, right. Six players. Magnificent. Three hours. What else does it do? <laughs> what else does it do? It's got resource management. This game's got Euro. Oh, you know, man. Euro through and through you think elements built into it. Yeah. So if you're a Euro player, this game's got it. Oh, absolutely. It's got all the Euro bases covered. Yep. You like minis? Well, you're a dudes what? on a map kind of player? <laughs> guess got what you this covered. game has? It's got you covered. <laughs> it's got minis out the wazoo. And they look good. They do look good. Especially compared to TI. <laughs> They're just better. They're just magnificent ships. I'm telling you. It's got combat with those minis. And what that you combat, doing? you get dice checking you're in there. dice at each other. And you're yelling at each other and cheering and booing each other. And Multicolored dice because you get to upgrade your fleets and your ships. Yeah. So you, you get got to research new technologies. Use those technologies to upgrade. Cannons. Yeah, right? <laughs> Gauss cannons, shields, yeah. weapons. Oh, it's awesome. Warp drives. It's got the whole thing. <laughs> you know, this, this game's got it all. I'm telling you right now. Combat. You're literally throwing dice at each other. Yeah, you got. That's what I do anyway. Oh, I love it. I like to intimidate them across the table and just literally throw the dice right at them. Like there, that's. I just hit you with 
three sixes. <laughs> like I hit you with three sixes. <laughs> you know you're in a game when you're playing with me. <laughs> yeah. What else does this game got? It's got alien races. Lots of them. Lots of them. With all different types of... Asymmetrical. Yeah. All different benefits. All different, like, startups. It's got all the things. It's, this game's got everything. You can make or break alliances. Right. Making and breaking alliances. Whatever suits your alliances, purpose. Yeah. You you make an alliance, great. You break you an break alliance? You the next turn. Great. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've used that player, you got what you needed out of him, and now you're moving on to the next victim. Maybe the next time they're going to try and use you, and you get to make up your mind if, if you let maybe, that happen or maybe. not. Maybe. Maybe it benefits you as well. Yeah. This game is the best space themed game. The reason we chose this game in particular is well, first off, it's purely the best. Secondly, we discovered this game while overseas, and this game, the second we saw it, sunk us right back into the Absolutely. board gaming hobby single handedly. Single-handedly yeah. is responsible for having us sitting at this table right now. Eclipse, hands down, number one space theme game of all time. What Prove else me is wrong. there? I'd, I'd like to see you yeah. try. Try. I'll throw some dice at you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Eclipse, the best. The best. We got to go. See you in the next episode. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Hi, I'm Royce Calverly. Definitely a board game podcast. A podcast definitely about board games, except when it isn't. And we're here in week two of our ongoing adventure to determine what is the best space game. Well, what makes a space game a space game? Is it enough that it just takes place out in outer space? Well, that's part of it. But what if it only takes place on, you know, one planet or one ship? Is that really a space game or is that just, you know, a room game? It's set on that one location. Space should cover more. Space should include lots of planets and asteroids and everything space has to offer. It should have aliens. It should have all of the different cultures and technologies. It should be Star Wars and Star Trek. It should be this expansive universe. Space is massive. Space is huge. And the game that reflects it should be just as huge. It should be just as varied and big and giant. Twilight Imperium is a space game. Twilight Imperium is the epitome of what a space game is. There are 17 races of aliens that differ from humanoid to completely not humanoid. I mean, we got everything in there. Every race is unique in its play style. It's unique in its goals. It's unique in everything about it. The main character of Twilight Imperium, though, is space. 57 tiles make up for a unique, different play space every time you play this game. You're going to have unique planets. You're going to have these resource-rich asteroids. There are wormholes to allow you to jump around the galaxy, cosmic storms and supernovas to block your routes. This has everything space has to offer. This is space. All right, let's compare it to the competition. All right, seriously, if you didn't hear air quotes there, put some air quotes in there, because there is no competition. Twilight Imperium is space in a box. But let's look at things like Battlestar Galactica. Look, it's a good game. It's a great game, even. But it's not a space game. It's one ship. Really, that's all it is. I mean, yeah, we have the fleet. We have these little tags that just sit around behind our ship. It's one ship. All the action happens on one ship. Yeah, we jump to another planet. Is there another planet? Well, no. There's a little picture of another planet. We say, oh, we made it to a different planet. No, we didn't. We're exactly the same place. The board hasn't changed. It looks exactly the same. The resources are basically the same. It's one ship. On Mars has a similar problem. Let's face it. It's Mars. It says it right in the title. This is a spreadsheet game about a single planet. Look, I like On Mars. Don't get me wrong. But it's not space. This could be a farming game. This could be anything, right? That's all we're really doing. We're playing Agricola on Mars. I mean, great. I love it. It's great. But it's not space. Nemesis. Well, we're fighting alien spe one alien species, just to be clear. We're fighting one alien species on the Nostromo. No, no, wait. Hold on. We're fighting one alien species on the not Nostromo. This is not aliens, people. I mean, come on, this is a game that couldn't even come up with its own theme. 
had to copy off of another movie. And even that movie is not a space movie. It's not like there's any big space action. It all takes place on the one ship. Again, we could do this in a building. What if you were they were zombies instead? It'd be the same game. It, the only difference would be, you know, the little minis. Eclipse is probably the closest to another space game, which makes sense. Because let's face it, Eclipse is really just a knockoff of Twilight Imperium. It's a cheap knockoff. It has some of the same things. It has the same theme. It has the same idea. It isn't as well rated on BGG. It has like a 7.6 versus Twilight Imperium's 8.7 rating. Twilight Imperium, by the way, is the highest rated game out of all of these games. It has the highest rating. It has that, well, the only one, I think, that's over an 8. Yeah, you could vote for Eclipse, but why? Why would you vote for the cheap knockoff when the original, the best, the highest rated, the single most space in a game game that you can ever find is there for you? Twilight Imperium. All right, everybody. That's me for this episode. You know what to do. Vote for Twilight Imperium. It is clearly the best choice for a space game. Have a great day, everybody. You are listening to Of Dice and Men, the podcast where we talk about board games, the people who play them, and the culture surrounding the hobby. And specifically today, we are talking about Battlestar Galactica on the last game standing, best space game ever made on the Friday Night Games podcast. And today, right now, we're going to talk about why this game, Battlestar Galactica, is the best of all space-themed games the ever best. made. Ever. The best. Hands down. No other competition. Period. Ryan, why is this the best game ever? I think this is the best game ever because there's a lot of drama and tension when you're playing this game because of the hidden hidden trader roles and not knowing who you can trust and not knowing who you can trust is like a huge theme in so many different sci-fi horror movies like any sci-fi movie that's also a horror there's that mistrust where either like there there's a sort of like a hidden main baddie like the thing or something like that where they take on the human form like in Battlestar Galactica or it's right. just not knowing if people have the same goals and are working together and i think Battlestar Galactica the show and the board game nail that theme perfectly that sort of sci-fi horror not knowing who you can trust in this sort of contained ship where you really need to all be working together to survive definitely true i i think one of the reasons bsg works so well is because it does have a lot of that generic sci-fi in it there's there's spaceships there's robots there's space battles there's the the idea that you know resources are scarce and as humanity we've got to you know come together and, and, and work work with one another and try to support and then like you mentioned as well it carries some of that kind of sci-fi horror theme too that you Seen like Alien and The Thing and, and other movies like that, where there's that hidden layer of doubt. Like you can't be a hundred percent sure that what you're doing is correct. And, and like you said, the game nails it. But it's still like part of the reason why I think BSG, both the show and the board game, works so well is it still has that human connection. Like you still feel like on the human team, um, you've got to work together. If you don't work together, humanity is doomed. And it really gets that across through the crisis cards that you you deal with with the game, the shared resources, the fact that you're always like on the brink of failure, on the brink of death. And they do a great job of, of communicating that, that space-centric theme as you play the game. And quickly, I think also the way that you have to coordinate the actions that you can conduct on the actual ship, because every room within the ship has its own specific action. But also, if you're a pilot and you're out flying a Viper, right. which is a fighter ship out in the space and, and fighting the Cylon Raiders, there's just so many cool elements of having to coordinate your actions with others, yet not knowing if you actually can trust the people you're coordinating. Like the Executive Orders, which is probably one of the only games that has that. But the idea that as a player, I'm trusting you to take a slightly more powerful action, that's cool. I, I love that it, it has that that theme of trust and kind of do I or don't I as part of that, right? Well, and, and I think you guys are right. And those are all fantastic things. But if I could boil down why Battlestar Galactica is the best game ever, I would say it really comes down to two major points. And one is, and I will go at length about this, one of the best game mechanics is kind of like cooperative play because, you know, everybody gets to play the whole game. Everybody's working together, working towards something. But there can be problems with cooperative play, like, the, you know, the, the problem where somebody's like coaching or whatever the word is, quarterbacking, where they're, they're basically telling everybody what to do. And it's kind of like one big one player game. But the solution to that 
is the hidden trader. The hidden trader aspect just adds a whole new dimension to the game. It makes sure you can't quarterback because, oh, you never know who you can trust. He's telling you what to do, but he might be the bad guy. It adds this layer of, you know, player versus player. We're all out for each other. We're trying to get, we're trying to work together, but we don't know what we can do and what we can't because we don't know who we can trust, like you guys said. And then, of course, it still keeps everybody in the game until the end. Now, the thing about the the hidden trader is, you know, in its purest form, let's say like the game, the resistance, which is what I would call the pure hidden trader game. The object is to find the hidden trader. And as soon as you find that hidden trader, the game is done. And that's and, and don't get me wrong. That's fantastic. But what BSG does is it elevates us elevates this to the next level it, it, it because as soon as you the traders found out they just moved to this other great space battle game that's happening and, and you don't get weaker it's not really a penalty it's really just a, okay well now i shift to there so if it happens early in the game no big deal if you can keep being the trader for so long and just constantly thwarting even better and it fits with the theme of the show you never know what's going to happen and so i would say it's not a pure hidden trader game but i would say it lays bare the essentials that give all the great things that a hidden trader does now second to that is like i said this space game this space game that has this narrative beats because the Cylons are coming for you and you have to escape and it gets very tense and you're overwhelmed and suddenly you escape and there's a moment there's a beat where you rest you look at the losses you've taken and you start to plan. Okay. And then the silence starts showing up again. And you're like, Oh my God, the tension is rising. We're moving again. We're heading towards, you know, a crisis and you have to escape. And, the, and it rises and it falls. And there's these narrative beats of, are we going to escape? Yes. Is this the time we're going to die? Or is this the time we're going to get out of here finally? And it's great. And so, you know, in summary, I would say that, like I said, Battlestar Galactic, it, it lays bare this essential hidden trader element that just adds so much to the game and it has these narrative beats that are just so exciting to play through so what can i say other than bears beats battlestar galactica okay we're back <laughs> yeah how about that magic what, what do you guys think i mean that's a pretty solid argument i totally agree <laughs> i mean that's the thing. Pithy, inspirational. Yeah, I, it actually kind of makes me want to go buy another copy. Of, I agree. Of Space Team? Yeah, I agree, <laughs> actually. Yeah, we should all buy copies of Space Team. That's my there thought, too. Yeah. I, I think I think there was some pretty good points brought up. Like, Royce go on. from Definitely a Board Game <laughs> Podcast was constantly saying how on Mars, which is not on this, yeah. <laughs> it's like a farm simulator, which was pretty funny. It was actually yeah, like true. a really funny comment. I laughed out loud when I heard it. So Yeah, who wants to poop potatoes, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too bad on Mars uh, didn't make the cut for, for the first. Yeah, that was pretty. Yeah. For the first few here. Yeah. Yeah, that was an easy yeah it was kind of a sad. Online, you know. And and I think I think like I listen, you know, I've listened to everything so far and it's people had some really funny arguments, especially in the last episode for it. So I'm excited to listen to it. Yeah, it's actually really yeah. funny. But that's a spoiler. A little, little bit of a spoiler. <laughs> but hey, whatever. Okay, so we're going to start with the voting. So it's going to work a little bit differently this time. So John and I are going to tell you listeners our vote which is going to be together so we're going to have to try and convince each other what to vote for cuz you guys have to agree yeah you yes. don't get two votes no we no have to agree, yeah. no but last season we we got two votes so you two would have had two votes but this season I'm like you know what I need people to fight <laughs> yeah. more discussion that way yeah too. exactly but if, if we would get another vote for a third person man I'd, I'd call my wife in here for a minute <laughs> I'm calling my wife right now yeah exactly she's gonna Phone drive around speaker phone. we got four votes put, coming put the yeah. kids in put the kids in too <laughs> kids wake up <laughs> <laughs> alright so so John what are you feeling we should vote off okay so we're talking about theme here right mm -hmm. so when I look at all the games I'm going to have to go with Battlestar Galactica. Really? Yeah. So You're on a spaceship, though. I, I know. But if you think about fin you know, Fantasy Flight games, they lost the license, so they can't use Battlestar Galactica anymore. Mm -hmm. So they literally reskin the game to be on a boat. So now you're not even on <laughs> a spaceship Unable. anymore. I believe it's the name of the new one. It is. Yeah, unfathomable, right? So, yeah, so you're trying to tell me that you know we should vote off Battlestar Galactica because we can't actually play the game right <laughs> i guess you can't i mean that's a good argument that's pretty good 
<laughs> I, I was gonna say I, I was gonna say Twilight Imperium just because you know it actually has nothing to do with theme. I just think the game takes forever to play. <laughs> like literally, it takes like five hours to play through a game. Yeah, like maybe an hour and a half per person. So that's my choice. But I get what you're saying with the theme, right? And I like it. So I mean, really, I would want to be like, let's vote off our own game, but we're not gonna do that. No, we did that last time. Yeah, we did. So <laughs> I'll do that for you. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. <laughs> yeah, I just I just think, you know, if you're gonna choose a game, it's gotta be a game that's gonna stand the test of time. And yeah. you know, if you lose a license to uh to an IP, then sorry. Right, yeah. which is why they had to make Unfathomable because they yeah. lost that license. So that that makes sense. Okay, we'll yeah. go with that. So our vote Friday Night Games is Battlestar Galactica. There we go. I think you made some great points, and and I'm I'm actually going to try to use some of those points in, in my defense too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It. So so what game do the two of you want to vote off? So I I we haven't talked about it no, uh, together, no. but I don't know how he stands. He earlier he just said he would pick whatever I pick, but I don't I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, so I already so well you go ahead you go first. I want to see what you you came up with. All right. So. When you were saying, you know, it needs to be a game that stands the test of time, that has a huge influence on the board game community, that is recognizable, I, I agree that Battlestar Galactica is kind of like on the line there, right? Because of the lack of the IP at going forward. And if we're recommending these games, shouldn't you be able to go and play it? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. you, you just can't. <laughs> so that... That's my second choice in this. My actual first choice is a game that, you know, just because it rhymes with theme doesn't <laughs> mean that it has it. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. I know what game you're talking about. On Mars? <laughs> yeah, on Mars. We should vote that one off. Sorry, go ahead. Space team has no theme. It's just, what? it could be anything. I mean, it's just the sports team. Yeah, it could be a, a football game in like two minutes. I yeah. think you're dreaming Army. over here. Space Team is full Army. of theme. Dream you're on spaceship. No, you gotta admit that is like the laziest name of any game ever made. <laughs> like I don't know if that's a card game or if it's a dodgeball. I think it's like I can see that as like a generic cereal on like the bottom shelf. You know, right next yeah. to like the actual authentic cereal. Oh man, that's the like Space Adventure, and then you got Space right. Team. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's y'all's pig, but I, I, I was like, I never even heard of that game before. Like, <laughs> oh, there's really? no way that's not going to get kicked out. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to say the same thing. Space Team. Oh, I, I never on. heard of the game. Uh, <laughs> right. But but I came in here actually with thinking BGG should go down. Mouse or Mouse or Black got BSG. Should BSG. Go down. Because that for the same reasons you said, the fact that they could easily retheme it and. In fact, the HP Lovecraft theme is so much it's better. better anyway. It is. Plus, you know, Battlestar Galactica had two good seasons. I mean, come on. You know, <laughs> I, I think it had four it, good seasons. That half season and, is where it ended. Let's be serious. And, and Eclipse, okay, is a better lightweight version of it anyway. Mm -hmm. So you might as well just dump Battlestar Galactica. Wow. Uh, that's 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 actually my pick. Was, well, we have to agree on this. Yeah. Yep. Well, so I'm not a secret Cylon, so I'm going to just say right now. Battlestar Galactica, but we have to. This is where we have to agree, right? Yeah. So, yeah. and I agree with John's mm -hmm. points. I agree with mm -hmm. your point on mm -hmm. BSG. Mm -hmm. I, but I think this is this the theme yeah. question. Yeah. I feel like Space Team is the one that gets dropped at this point. Okay. So, like, if what, you specifically are talking about you, the theme. Yeah. If you answer one question for me, I'll either be on your side or I won't be. Okay. Is there a hidden traitor in Space Team? No. no. <laughs> then the space team's gotta go. <laughs> at least, at least BG, at least BSG has a, a hidden traitor element, which is kind of cool. And, and it's often found in sci-fi tropes. So yeah, yeah. we gotta hand it to that as far as the theme. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, Sorry, guys. That's okay. No, we, no. I, every, it's funny because you're not the only one to vote Space Team off, and everyone who votes off is like, "We're sorry, we're sorry." <laughs> it's like, no, don't be sorry. Yeah, this well, is this is your I know you guys kind of like had less time to prep for it, but at the same time, you picked Space Team. Yeah, we we spoiler alert. <laughs> but we chose it. We were just like, "What's the most ridiculous space game we have that we can we don't have to play again to explain it." <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> we, had to do, we literally had to do it in like 20 minutes. We're yeah. like, okay, we don't have... On Mars is dropped. We need to like figure out something. Have you played On Mars? John, uh, we tried John to. fell asleep. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> oh my gosh. I yeah. fell asleep setting it like, up. You could have just taken the reins and, you know, jumped in and said, we'll defend on Mars. Oh, yeah. that's true. That's true. Unfortunately, we never played it. Yeah, so played it, it would be so. hard. Ah. It'd be hard to defend a game I've never played. Unless I'm like, hey, it's yeah. like Farm Simulator on Mars. And everyone could be like, uh, <laughs> what? Well, you know, I guess you, you could also do Unfathomable if you haven't played Battlestar <laughs> That's true. We, we could have done like terraforming Mars. We could have done Beyond the Sun. Those are two really good games we could have yeah. done. But we we, right. we thought, you know what? We took the uh, humor angle. We don't really care if we win. Yeah. So and we just took a humor we angle to it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So on that yeah. note, I will reveal the rest of the votes. Sweet. All so right. I'm um, uh, are definitely you name the number for each one. Or? So, yeah. So definitely a board game podcast voted off Space Team. <laughs> of dice and men canadianly apologized and voted off space team there we go meeple dungeon actually voted for twilight imperium okay wow yeah i think they just they're just like wow. me. i think they're just like me and i think they also think that twilight imperium is the biggest threat to eclipse yeah so well, i think they're trying to get rid of it right yeah um, that is a strategy <laughs> so there's two for space team one for ti we obviously voted for bsg so it's it's good. And then Meeple Mentor, you two, Jared and Jay, you voted for Space Team. So Space Team's gone. Boo. But expected. <laughs> yeah, we expected it. All fans of that game are going to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> All five of our listeners will be upset. Yeah. They'll be uh, angry. Come on, man. Space Team. But uh, no, you know what? Honestly, like, I'm not shocked by our game being kicked off. No, not at all. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? Space Team is probably going to get a ton more hits on BGG after this podcast. I hope so. That'd be hilarious. That'd be amazing. I mean, yeah. yeah. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow up because people are like, wait, wait, wait. Well, we've never heard of this. If, if it's that great, well, you know. Yeah, the, we, the designer's going to wake up, like, on a Monday morning and be like, <laughs> it's on the hottest What? <laughs> My agent called. They want me to make they a movie. Want... Space Team 2. Space Team 2. <laughs> no, it's Restoration a... Games wants me to do... <laughs> it's a pretty... <laughs> It is a pretty fun party game. game. Like, if yeah, you like party, party games, games and you just like something super casual you could play in five minutes, it's actually really good. But it's not it's not that deep epic space game that you're gonna like, you know, continue playing every week. Right. And that's that's where I was coming from on like theme wise. I feel like that's really gotta be that's gotta be the choice. Yeah. But hey, I might I mean if this is like a light party style game, I might have to check this out. I mean that's right up his alley of games yeah. he likes. Yeah. You yeah. should definitely so. check it out. I highly I've highly recommended it to a lot of people too. Yeah. And they've all yeah. loved it, honestly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I actually will check it out. It's for real. Good. Sweet. There you go. See, Actually, we won even though we them. lost. There we go. Yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> we may have lost the game, but we've gained a friend. There, oh, there I you think go. we can all learn from this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think so, too. Board games make the world go round. They do. Okay, so on that note, I just want everyone to know that what's left is Twilight Imperium, Eclipse, Battlestar Galactica, and nemesis nemesis yeah all great games so if if you're done with listening to us talk you can tune in next week where we'll vote off one of those four games or you can hear what we're about to talk about right now which is what john meeple mentor wants us to know or wants to know what makes board games fun so let's talk about it okay sweet let's get into that what makes board games fun for you matt well you're just throwing it right at me yep <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends. It. <laughs> it depends, right? I think there's like a couple groups. You know, there's there's like a fun group. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't say there's a fun group. There's a group that likes lighter games. And if you're going for a group that likes lighter games, you want something where people can make fun of each other and kind of talk while they're playing. Actually, Space Team, I know it just got voted off, but <laughs> it's actually a great game. I've recommended it to several people and they've all loved it. The only issue with the game, though, is it kind of gets boring. So like once you play it maybe like 10 times, you basically seen everything and that's kind of what sucks about it yeah. but i think there's other great light games looking at my shelf we got like codenames is fantastic fantastic party game you know you set up into two groups and you're basically trying to guess you're giving like a code word and a number and you're trying to guess that many tiles to get your team an advantage over the other team yeah. and try not to, you're trying to guess all your tiles you're trying to flip all your tiles before the other team does and i think that is such a great game to play because it's light it's easy to teach and people have a lot of fun. But then if your game group is like, if they like really heavy games, 
right? Then you got then you know that's a different diff that's a different definition of fun, right? They want strategy, right? Their fun is strategy. So I guess it, I guess it depends on the person. Are you somebody who plays a board game for lightheartedly and being fun, or are you a person who plays a board game because you want deep strategy? In that case, you're gonna be playing Nemesis. You're gonna be playing on Mars. You're gonna be playing every game that we talk about in this board game podcast, right? right. Because that is your that is your idea of fun, trying to figure out a system and, and solve it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What about you guys? Yeah, I think you know the your response was was very practical. You know, it's like if you like this, then you do that, and if you like this, you do that. But I feel like there's also, I feel like there's got to be something more intrinsically connected for everybody in like what they're looking for, what they think, like what makes the game fun. I mean, like as a designer, not me personally, but if you're designing a game, you have to think not only does this cohesively, you know, work together as a system that, you know, is unbreakable, right? It kind of falls within its own universe there, but does it appeal to other people? and why i feel like that's an important question when you're looking at what games you want to play what games you want to pick out and certainly games that you want to design you know what is it that's going to attract people to this and there, there's a lot of answers to that more than just what kind of light or heavy experience do i want because i could read a, like i could read a, a novel you know and you know like that's also fun but board games have a unique a uniqueness to them mm. So I introduce games to a lot of non-gamers, and so um, I think for that, for for a group of, of folks who are just kind of exploring for the first time maybe some of these new modern hobby games, having a sense that the game gives them of like an equal playing field, so everybody can succeed in this game equally. They don't feel like, like if you, you pull out a game like Stra Scrabble or Trivial Pursuit, somebody's going to at that table is going to think I can't spell as well as this other person at the table, or I don't know as much trivia as this other person at the table, but you pick, pull out a game, like say wits and wagers. Well, I don't need to know the answer to wits and wagers. I just need to bet on who I think knows the answer at the table and you can win by not even getting close to the answers. So for me, games that, you know, give everybody a sense that I can participate equally and have a chance um, to win. And have a chance to win, or even in cooperative. I think, to me, a cooperative game for new players, as, as long as it's not, like, to me, not necessarily a pandemic style, but a game where everybody's participating, like, you know, a game like Chameleon, or a game where there's maybe, like, a, a hidden trailer, trader, or even Cockroach Poker, where you can have some light fun and, and still s semi-single some people out, but in a way that it's, it's, it's random, so that's going to happen to different people at the table at different times. Mm -hmm. I think for me, for lighter games, that's that's kind of one of my definitions. Well, one thing when you, and it makes you laugh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one thing that you mentioned that I also think can be pulled out to not just lighter games is the the concept of like an equal playing field, mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a light game, but if the game is designed in a way that it's fair. And that could mean, you know, a lot of people say balance yeah. or like skills versus skills and abilities versus abilities, or just the idea that if I work, you know, like hard at getting to learn this system, like this game, that I could have a better odd, you know, mm. my, my chances of winning go up. So to me, sometimes the answer of what is fun is a skill level of like, what level of skill do I prefer to have a good time? Hmm. In a party game, low skill level because almost anyone can win without having to have experience in it, Yeah. right? But then <laughs> games like, I don't know, Terraforming Mars, you're gonna need more plays and more understanding of the cards and the systems in that game uh, through repetitive play that you develop a skill. And that skill set, you know, hopefully helps you, you know, mm -hmm. do better. And for a lot of people, that's what that's what they want, you know, to have the ability to say, I'm I'm good at this game. Yeah, I, I think. I, oh, I, go ahead. Sorry, I definitely think that yeah, mastery is something that people like, right? Mm -hmm. Where they they can learn a game and they play it over and over, and then they get better and better at it. I think people do see that. I think there is, I guess, going back to my like party game aspect when Jay was also saying it too. It's like people like those games because. It is an even playing field. They don't have to have the skills when they jump in, mm -hmm. right? Terraforming Mars is a scary game for non-gamers because they're like, oh, I'm playing with you. You already know how to play, so you already have a strategy. I'm just learning, right? Yeah. That's one thing I like about randomness in games, too, because randomness gives the appearance 
of an, a level playing field because you know a bad dice roll could, um, happen, to could happen to anybody right. or our card draw like you know like we're you know uno or llama or something like that you know you never know what's going to come up and everybody's got the same kind of equal chances even a game like kingdom builder it is so restrictive in that you're only you're drawing one card you don't have a lot of options so you know your decision space is really limited and since everybody's decision space is limited you know you might get the perfect card you need mm -hmm. right at the right time and somebody else might not or somebody else might on a turn that you don't mm -hmm. so i think those are also ways that you can kind of either intentionally or not you know give everybody a feeling of this is a, a, a winnable game for me for sure I mean, for me, what makes board games fun is like, I like the connection that I get with everybody. So, you know, when I got into playing more modern board games, I had just moved home from living out of town after I got married. And, you know, Matt and I went, Matt and I have been friends for years. We went to grade school together and one of our friends invited us out to a comedy show and Matt said that they do game night and I came to it and I was just like sold and then I just had this nice big connection with you know my old grade school friends and then met some new people as well and then when I got home I told my wife all about you know we played dead of winter and I was like ah board games are more than you know Monopoly and and Scrabble that we've been playing and her and I really connected over Everdell and I think that's what makes it fun for so, me. It's like the connections, or, or that like I've been you getting. with your your daughters connected over uh, what's that dinosaur game by Panasaurus. Oh yeah, we played Gods of Dinosaurs right. together. Yeah, I just like I I really dig the connection that board games bring to the table, <laughs> pun intended. So okay, I got a question for all of you right now. If I were to say what is a fun game to you, name it. Food chain magnet. Sorry, food chain magnet. Food chain magnet. Nice. Mm. I, the first thing I thought was uh, Six Nymph or uh, Take Take Five. I think it was Take Six. Like, you better name a Knizia game. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> this one actually. This is actually saying a lot about our personalities here. Yeah, for me, I yeah. would probably yeah. say Everdell, and I would probably say uh, Five Minute Dungeon. There you go. So I, mm -hmm. I think like when you when you think about that, it's like, hey, what is fun to you is what you actually like getting out of the game. Like Jared, you said food food chain magnate right and that's a pretty heavy game am i am i wrong it's one of the heaviest exactly sure. yes yeah. so you are like a strategy person you enjoy systems you enjoy solving systems you enjoy like looking at optimizations right jay you just said that you like just say six yeah six nymph right which is which is a very it's like it, party it, card game, it, it, yeah it is yeah, a party it, card it, game it's simple right yes. it's simple yep. it's fun to play right and you could teach it really quick so clearly you like yeah having like a fun time with your friends and family right when you play a game yeah yeah i love i love a game that you just can teach in like 30 seconds everybody can play like one card and then everybody gets the game from that point on exactly yeah so you you, you just like that the aspect of like the socialization of it right john yeah. you just said Whatever you hate having to teach a game yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's also true people, that's true actually that's also true john you just mentioned yeah, yeah. everdell and I, and I know that's because of the connection with your wife man yeah. just to get in there like i'm sorry i'm in your head right now but that's what that was right you're like yeah. hey man like i really like the connection i got with my wife out of that it was important especially yeah. after having kids and you know you're busy and then me it's like five minute dungeon that's just i love chaos <laughs> and i love having a quick party game to play yeah right so sweet so you're, you're more of a fan of like randomness and games i do you know what i think randomness makes a game more fun because sometimes people will play a game just to win right and and like I, we're all smart people and and i know right off the bat that if you put time and effort and you research you can get good at any game Right? right. So I like a game where it's like, hey, we're just going to play this. And yeah, you can have strategy. You can bring in that to the table, but there's going to be a randomness that's just going to just mess you over completely. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think I, that that's way more fun. It makes the playing field, you know, even. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's definitely it lowers the barrier to entry for the game itself and uh, getting more people to play it, certainly. And the down or there's less downtime to actually teach the game. You could probably get more games in, you know. Yeah. So if you're looking for just more of an experience of the whole thing, you can have it multiple times in a faster time than learning and playing Food Chain Magnate. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know. Yeah, like you're, but, I could get in, you know, 20 games of... Uh, I could get in like... 10 games of uh, five minute dungeon, you know, in the same time that you're going to get in like half a game of food chain magnate. Right. Yeah. 
And right. I think that that's important for me, especially when like, uh, you know, Friday, Friday night games comes from the aspect that we actually, our editor, Kevin actually created a environment that we all used to go to, to basically nerd out with. And it was more of a social atmosphere for a bunch of nerds. And it turned right. into board games later on because we we're just trying to figure out stuff to do together. And sometimes we have people pop in and out. So when I have like a quick, easy game, it's easier to bring anyone into play and enjoy mm -hmm. what we enjoy. Mm -hmm. Right. When, I, when, when I teach, like, I'll just give you an example. We were trying to teach um, Unfathomable for the last month, but people keep dropping in and I'm like, these are not the people who are going to want to play this game. Right. Right. And they, and they don't stay for the full time either. And then you're like, well, why were we even playing? <laughs> so <laughs> is what it is. Time is a factor uh, as well for fun. You know, if you know that someone's not going to be either there the whole time or at least willing to take the time it, it takes to actually learn the game, then you probably don't want to play that game with that person. You know, there's the, the right game for the right crowd, for the right time and yeah. all that. And recognizing, you know, what other people are probably going to find fun is the lighter stuff, mm -hmm. at least at first. Then, in my opinion, they move towards thematic games. Yeah. Yes. you know, an IP that they recognize. And then from there, then they get introduced to the more Euro-y pushing cube stuff. And then they're like, huh, I'm getting better with this whole tabletop thing. Maybe I should, you know, I, I kind of like this, you know? Yeah, that was definitely, definitely my journey was like that. And, and there's so few games that are completely universal. And so when I find those gems, like those are what I will always lead with. Give me an example. Like Six Nymph is one to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious uh, <laughs> I, was, I was choking him off screen um like six nymph is one for me i think if you have a larger crowd things like uh chameleon is great detective club or dixit you know those are great games for larger audiences and then you know i've never i've never gone wrong with a small crowd with like a splendor mm. you know or yeah, even a okay. splendor or azul <laughs> um both are great for like four you know four or less i've, I've found He's he's looking for the universal cure to gamers' fun. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And I'm I'm just like all over the place. Yeah. I'm like I like this, I like that, I like this. But yeah. it sounds now like for me, like Jared, I want to play so, like Taylor Walken or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, Jared, it sounds like you really know what you like, right? And Jay, it sounds like you really like to like get people into it, right? I think that's like yeah. For me, it's just because I like I don't have the same consistent people all the time because I was running a meetup basically. Yeah. And so I was always looking for stuff that I could like, w it would work with just about anybody. And then people would break off and play the stuff that they, you know, really liked. And one thing I think too, which is slightly deviating from the topic, us who are in the hobby, you know, we tend to like a lot of variety, right. like a lot of different games, but new people, a lot of times, like one or two, they will want to continue to play the same game over and over and over again. And so I found that that could be a frustration if I was introducing, you know, new stuff all the time right. because people would say, like, oh, well, that game we played last time was really fun. I'd love to play that again. Sushi Go was just fantastic. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, you know, kind of sticking to, like, some games for a longer period of time if you're doing multiple meet right. meetups and stuff like that, he's like, I think it's a good strategy, too. He's got a strategy for grooming new gamers. That's I do. awesome. <laughs> that's I do. great. I think that's that's yeah. needed. Although it's funny, Absolutely. Jared, it's funny you're like, Sushi Go, you're like, okay, we're playing Sushi Go again. I could just see Jared just getting up and walking out. And, <laughs> <laughs> like, forget and I'm this. Like, um, here's, your, here's your cloak and sacrificial dagger. Come on in. <laughs> I, I keep those kinds of games so that I can introduce yeah. new people. And I actually did play Sushi Go like last weekend <laughs> when we were at a friend's house. And they, they were not gamers at all. But I brought a little tin can, which is kind of up here. I don't know if you can see it, but... Uh, it's like a metal lunchbox that I put like 12 card games in, mm -hmm. you know, or, or equivalent. Sushi Go, I actually introduced that to a lot of my non-gamer friends. Um, yeah, honestly, because right? yeah. it's, 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 so, it's so cute. The sushi yeah. is just adorable. Like and that's, if, they, if they don't like the game, they're going to like the images they're looking at. So. Yeah. Bill Walker Harding, I mean, you know, he's, right. he's the man. Can't go wrong. That stuff. Yeah. So it was like a Friday night, and then the next morning, he texts me, and he's like, hey, thanks for bringing those games. We really liked them because my wife just bought Sushi Go. <laughs> and I'm like, we haven't even, like, not even 12 hours have gone, and they ordered Sushi Go. That's so amazing. That happens a lot with just one, I find. Same thing. Yep. You play yeah, it, just... and it's like instant buy, you know. 
So those games are important. <clears throat> they have a good, you know, niche and like purpose and they stick around for, for these kinds of reasons. Yeah. They've got that general populace appeal. And then the longer you stay in the hobby, I feel like that's where you start getting into like heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. Yeah. And for me, because again, his his crowd that he's normally playing with, at least before moving yeah. here, was, you know, either new people every every week or just new gamers, you know. Mm -hmm. And but me I'm always in like the same group of people, mm -hmm. you know, give or take, you know, 15 people. And these are all gamers. And so we tend to just play either new stuff or, or heavy stuff mm -hmm. or just a kind of a combination of things, depending on, you know, just flavor and, you know, mixing yeah. things up. But out of all of my friends and people I've talked with or played with, I feel that my tastes are more open to all kinds of games. Like, and if I give you or sh like showed you everything in my collection, there's there's those lighter games, there's party games in there, there's like IP games, you know, that like Star Wars or God, mm -hmm. or uh, Godfather. I've got a, a number of those movie 80s games that the OP or the op has, has yeah. made. Like, I like those. Those are fun. But I have a varying like whether it's a Meritrash or Euro, like I like them both, mm -hmm. you know, I think we're both we're both real Omni gamers. He, he, Jared skews just heavier than me, mm -hmm. but I, I like all kinds of games and themes and everything else. So to me, it's just a fantastic hobby. And it's like, it's like, you know, movies, you know, I love comedies. I love dramas. I love sci-fi. It's the same with games. I like a variety. Yeah. There's something for everybody. I think that's a big plus to the hobby, especially at where it's at now. There's mm -hmm. so many new games getting printed and made like every year. It's just astounding. So if someone says that they don't play board games, it's only because they haven't found one that they like and because that game is out there. Yeah, right. totally. Agreed. Awesome. Well, that was great. Just so everyone knows, you actually interviewed Jamie Stegmeier with this exact same question, right? That was sort of why I wanted to bring it up here. Uh, two years ago, one of my first interviews that I had on the channel was with Jamie Stegmeier, who, of course, you know, created a number of games for the... Stonemeyer company that he owns, including Viticulture, Scythe, um, Euphoria, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we, we chatted a little bit and I, I wanted to ask him some more deeper questions than just the standard, you know, like tell me about tapestry and why you like made it and <laughs> like, um, <laughs> you know, but yeah. uh, I said, you know, what, uh, what do you think makes a game fun as a game designer? Cause you, you make, clearly you've tapped into that, right? Because you've made such uh, amazing popular games that have sold quite well. Um, mm -hmm. So what, in your opinion, you know, is it that makes people want to play them? You know, like he has that magic, right? That spark, like, and, and many others do, you know, you can name like 10 major designers that most like 90% or more of their games they're going to make are going to be hits or they're just going to be widely loved. So these people have nailed something to like the human psyche of what gamers like. And mm -hmm. I don't think it's just about popularity or, or, or like a fad, you know, it's like, oh yeah, you know, everyone's going to buy it because it's him. I mean, maybe some people do. I, but... I, I was going to say, I think there's a little bit of branding there. Yeah. Right. There's a little bit like they hit a hit and then, you know, you're going to get it. Like you like Kinesia, right? You know, you're going to get every Kinesia game. His name, will make, his name will make me try a game. Right. But it won't make me keep a game. Right. Absolutely. So it still has to, at the end of the day, be good. Sure. It sense to be good. So like bring up Stone, uh, Stegmaier, like Wingspan was a huge hit and like was on fire for about two, three months. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, what what's going to happen? Is it going to like filter out? or people still going to be playing it. And it's found a really strong crowd. And it's not as hyped as it used to be. That's to be expected. But the fact that it's like plateaued as a really popular, very well-selling game definitely speaks volumes. And I know he didn't design that one particularly. I, I, actually, we have a podcast on that exact answer. Uh, nice. We actually interviewed him too. And I actually asked him why Wingspan was super popular and his answer was actually it's well number one it's a very well designed game the game is actually amazing but the thing is it really hit a big bird community and because there's a lot of birders out there apparently you take a well designed game and stick a really good theme on it you're going to introduce a whole slew of people buying it so that's yeah. why it's so successful so i was like it's wow that that concept is of like moving from party games to like being comfortable with like a tabletop game to finding a theme that they like mm -hmm. and that's 
that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I think I think what Wingsman did to expand the hobby and what like the Prospera Hall folks are doing to expand the hobby by making actually good IP games mm-hmm. is kind of like the next evolution in mainstreaming this hobby to mm-hmm. a lot more people. Yeah, Target is doing a great service to the yeah. board gaming industry. As and well. they carry Wingspan too? Yeah, <laughs> they do. Yeah, They have Red Rising. They have Wingspan. Yeah. They yeah. have Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion at yeah, Target. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, like, it's, it's crazy where we're coming from, right? There's no more, like, usually you would go to an LGS or local gaming store to get those games, but now you can just go to Target. So that's that's bringing in all the people, right? And I think right. that's and important. People just walk in the aisles. It's right next to these toy aisles. And they're like, oh, that looks cool. And it's only $30, $40. And all of a sudden, you, you're going to find that these players like start becoming really into games. I've actually been like that creepy guy in Target that like <laughs> sees somebody looking at a game like Cards Against Humanity or like uh, what Exploding Cat. Do you um, wear like, khakis and a red shirt? Just you know, it's it looks like you're interested in something. Or perhaps you'd like to try Ticket to Ride. That's so. <laughs> but do you, do you go with khakis on with red shirt? Yeah, no, I don't pretend. I'm, you like you like, like just self-pump. you like pop out of an aisle like like yeah, you just pop like, like above above yeah. the case. You're like hello, <laughs> yeah, I have recommendations yeah, yeah. for you. You like you take like you take exploded kittens out of their hand. You just rip it in two. Yeah, but Jay, because you're I nice, just, you're I, just I, like I just see him walking up to someone who's looking at Cards Against Humanity and just like replacing it, like just taking it out of his hand. <laughs> just like let me just hand that yeah, to I'm you. Sorry, so this is now this is what we're looking for. It's out of stock. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> awesome man cool well thanks guys for for hopping on and participating in the last game standing space edition i'm sure we'll be back a few more episodes if you know what i mean yeah i hope so yeah. all go. the way to the end all the way baby we're, t- we're riding this train to the end there we go <laughs> tell everyone where they can find you again just so everyone knows yeah so it's the meeple mentor youtube channel so you can find it there and the mentor minutes podcast which is also on that channel but also on streaming and i also post a lot on instagram as at meeple mentor awesome well if you like what you hear don't forget to follow us on your favorite streaming platform you can follow us at Instagram at Friday Night Games underscore official, Twitter at Friday Night GMS, and you can check us out on our website, Friday Night Games. And again, I'm John. I'm Matt, and it's Friday night, so let's have some fun. Thanks, everyone. Bye.